We voyage space and stars as we trek Hollywood in the science fiction film genre. It's important to describe what we mean by science fiction, especially since the genre is so diverse and not easily defined. For instance, where does one draw the lines between science fiction and its sister genres of fantasy and horror? Is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea a science fiction tale or a fantasy adventure? Is Frankenstein and his monster a story of horror or a fiction of scientific magnitude? For our sake, science fiction is a genre that satisfies two criteria. First, there's a scientific plot element, be it advanced technology, extraterrestrials, future societies, or foreign worlds. And second, science fiction generally explores a philosophical theme or asks a metaphysical question. For the most part, science fiction is a genre which aims to engage an audience both with their brain and their eyes. Because of this, science fiction has deep roots in literature and is often on the cutting edge of special effects technology. With definitions and descriptions out of the way, we can now begin with the earliest science fiction films. Science fiction's first patron was the film pioneer Georges Méliès. Méliès' A Trip to the Moon serves as an origin for science fiction pictures. A Trip to the Moon was a 15-minute landmark showcasing special effects decades ahead of its time. A quarter of a century after Méliès' landmark film, German expressionist director Fritz Lang produced a science fiction magnum opus, Metropolis. The film introduced many of the genre's seminal themes. Alongside the thematic, Metropolis also pioneered some of the genre's most iconic and repeated imagery. One of Hollywood's early pioneering efforts at science fiction was the Flash Gordon serial starring Buster Crabbe. The success of the franchise's first serial, Flash Gordon Space Soldier, led to a string of sequels including A Trip to Mars and Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. Serials serve as an exaggerated form of genre filmmaking in that they provide the studio with easy to produce narratives, a set of reusable props and costumes, and easy to shoot scenarios to the highest degree. In 1945, a significant geopolitical event shook the world, the dropping of the atomic bomb. Never before had the magnificent power of science been so obviously displayed. The public's fear and fascination with science, and by extension science fiction, rapidly expanded in the decades to follow. We now loosely define this period as the golden age of science fiction, primarily for the prolific literary figures at the time, such as Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, and Robert Heinlein. This literary renaissance spilled over to cinema, where science fiction films flourished in the 1950s. Because of the political environment of Red Scare and the start of the Cold War, many of the critical successes of the time explored a similar theme, that of the threat of invasion from an alien race or way of thought. In The War of the Worlds, the human race is threatened with annihilation by a superior alien force. War of the Worlds invites many interpretations. For instance, the title War of the Worlds could be a symbolic fight between the superpowers and the fear of imminent annihilation already loomed in the air due to the threat of atomic war. Released in the same year as The War of the Worlds, Invaders from Mars was the first science fiction film to show aliens in color. Rushed to beat the release of War of the Worlds, the film is now praised for its groundbreaking special effects by the famed art director William Cameron Menzies in one of his directorial works. Fear of Invasion came to a head in 1956, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, where the ultimate fear of Red Scare comes to life when extraterrestrial invaders duplicate human beings to a race of pod people. The crowning achievement of this era of science fiction was MGM's Forbidden Planet. The film marks many firsts for the genre. For instance, it was the first film to take place in an entirely outside planet that must be reached by human starcraft. Much of the film's success can be explained by its landmark fully electronic score, its introduction of a sophisticated personable android called Robbie the Robot, and its literary aspirations, having many allusions to Shakespeare's The Tempest. Special effects have always been a crucial element in science fiction, and during this period of Hollywood, film wizard Ray Harryhausen's groundbreaking effects heavily influenced filmmaking. The work of Harryhausen, particularly his stop-motion breakthroughs, were the go-to source for many science fiction pictures. The Harryhausen legacy carried on with the next titan of film magic, Douglas Trumbull. 
Trumbull served as special effects supervisor and was responsible for many of the photographic effects and some of science fiction's most important pictures, including 2001 A Space Odyssey, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Blade Runner, and Tree of Life. Douglas Trumbull's career is expansive. The massive body of work stands as an unmatched achievement in the genre. One of Trumbull's films, Star Trek The Motion Picture, adapted the popular television series for the big screen. The Star Trek franchise started in 1966, but was canceled by the network after only three seasons. When it was syndicated, the series caught on, becoming a pop culture phenomenon. Another major science fiction franchise to capture the public was The Planet of the Apes. The original film starred Charlton Heston as an astronaut who crash lands in a mysterious place where the society is dominated by hyper-intelligent apes. Apes was a critical and commercial success, spawning many sequels and multiple reboots, and still to this day features one of cinema's greatest twist endings. Released in the same year as Apes, science fiction's tour de force 2001 A Space Odyssey is often cited as one of the greatest films of all time, and for good reason. 2001 is the standard by which all science fiction films should be measured. Steven Spielberg called the film the Big Bang of science fiction having come onto the screen in a burst of brilliance which opened an entirely new dimension for science fiction films to be made. In many ways, modern science fiction begins with 2001. No exaggeration, the film is groundbreaking on every major level, thematic and technical. The narrative is a series of vignettes jumping through different periods of human evolution and our contact with a mysterious alien monolith. Thematically through these vignettes, Kubrick delves into some of the genre's major themes, man versus technology, government conspiracy, artificial intelligence, evolution, extraterrestrials, and extra dimensions. Because of the sheer bulk of information, as well as Kubrick's reluctance to spoon feed the material, the film warrants multiple viewings. However, even on the first viewing, the technical brilliance of the film shines through. Even by today's standards, the special effects and tricks of the camera performed in 2001 are astonishing, and this is after almost half a century has passed. Kubrick's next film, A Clockwork Orange, took a different approach on science fiction. The film explores the controversial psychopath Alex and a set of goons as they terrorize the streets of dystopian England. The work of Kubrick has heavily influenced many directors, particularly those of the science fiction genre. Among these directors, Steven Spielberg, drew upon Kubrick's work in producing his own science fiction classics. Spielberg's first science fiction film, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, is a sentimental, awe-inspiring spectacle about the first contact with extraterrestrials. The film's smoky visuals and unique emotional resonance are trademarks that the director later displays in other science fiction classics like E.T. the Extraterrestrial, another charming picture involving alien contact. Impressed by Spielberg's work, Kubrick entrusted his final project to him after his passing. After AI, Spielberg's interest in science fiction renewed with Minority Report. After Minority Report, Spielberg teamed up with Tom Cruise again in his retelling of War of the Worlds. One of Spielberg's contemporaries, George Lucas, had another successful career in the science fiction genre. His first feature, THX 1138, was an extension of a short film he produced years earlier. After THX, Lucas directed his masterpiece, the science fiction classic and pop culture landmark, Star Wars. Star Wars ignited the public's interest in space and adventure. The success of Star Wars allowed the studio to commission two more films of the trilogy, and a generation later, Lucas returned to the saga with a new prequel trilogy. The science fiction renaissance of the 70s that saw such films as Close Encounters, Star Wars, and Logan's Run also experienced the extraterrestrial thriller Alien, a film which feared audiences with the horrific side of the genre and starred Sigourney Weaver in a breakout role directed by Ridley Scott, a director that would make science fiction history twice. Three years after Alien, Scott directed Blade Runner, an adaptation of Philip K. Dick's Do Android Stream of Electric Sheet. Blade Runner follows Rick Deckard, a man who hunts down replicants. Blade Runner is a delight for the eyes, but is also an in-depth inquiry into the nature of humanity and artificial intelligence. The film's thematic complexity and philosophical pursuit make it an acclaimed classic. Four years after Blade Runner, a sequel to Scott's Alien release. This film, Aliens, took the series even further and was shepherded by blockbuster director James Cameron, a filmmaker who had made a name for himself with the sci-fi action classic The Terminator. 
The success of these two films paved the way for Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Cameron's masterpiece. Judgment Day brings to life Arnold Schwarzenegger's iconic role in a twist on the series' original take. Schwarzenegger, by this time, had reached the heights of Hollywood stardom, featured a year earlier in Total Recall, another Hollywood adaptation of Philip K. Dick's work. By this time, Hollywood adaptations of science fiction literature was commonplace. In 1984, surrealist auteur David Lynch ambitiously tackled science fiction's quintessential novel, Dune. The project had many setbacks, and some argue it was doomed to fail. But nonetheless, Dune stands as an interesting case study in science fiction adaptation. The 1980s also saw a few other notable science fiction pictures, including Disney arcade adventure Tron and Terry Gilliam's dystopian satire Brazil. Also, the 80s brought to life the sci-fi blockbuster Back to the Future. A decade later, disaster film producer Roland Emmerich directed the science fiction blockbuster Independence Day, the highest grossing film of its year. The following year saw the release of Gattaca, a box office bomb at the time that eventually reached cult status for its masterful exploration in eugenics and the limits of biology. Similar to Gattaca, 1998's Dark City was another box office flop that wasn't recognized until after its release. However, sci-fi favorites are not always box office bombs. At the end of the century, Wachowski siblings directed their cyberpunk masterpiece, The Matrix and the film was a massive commercial success. The Western's philosophical background was combined with an Eastern take on action and visual style, drawing heavily upon martial art films and Japanese anime. Four years into the new millennium, writer-director team of Charlie Kaufman and Michelle Gondry joined forces for a one-of-a-kind science fiction rom-com dramedy, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. The film is unique in its blend of existential inquiry and emotional romance, as it follows Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet as a lovesick couple that decides to erase part of their memories to start over. A year after Sunshine, Joss Whedon brought a more traditional science fiction picture to the big screen with Serenity. Later into the decade, Disney Pixar produced animation film WALL-E about an adorable robot who falls in love with Eve, a sleek state-of-the-art robot who is way out of his league. In the following year, science fiction experienced a trifecta of successful films. On the smaller end, indie film Moon, directed by Duncan Jones, was a knockout investigation into the nature of identity and self. Another of the year's successes, this one with a bigger budget, was also directed by a young upstart director. District 9, directed by Neil Blomkamp, was an innovative pseudo-documentary that featured South Africa in a symbolic allegory for apartheid. The final sci-fi film of that year, this one with a massive budget, was Avatar, directed by James Cameron. The film's high budget paid off for the studio, as Avatar's record-breaking theatrical run makes it the highest grossing film of all time, topping the previous record holder, Cameron's previous film, The Titanic. In the summer following Avatar, popular director Christopher Nolan released Inception. By this time, Nolan had become a household name with films such as The Dark Knight and Memento. He leveraged his clout to get financial backing to pull off some of the most spectacular practical effects in recent memory. These practical effects are all the more impressive considering they come at a time when Hollywood's initial reaction to any cinematic scenario is to rely on computer graphics and special effects. Despite this trend, another director, Alfonso Cuaron, has filmed some of the greatest practical effects that have ever graced the screens of cinema. Cuaron's masterpiece, Children of Men, starred Clive Owen in a dystopia about crumbling world order due to two decades of human infertility. But it is the film's intelligent script, dense with many themes and contemporary references, as well as the highly innovative camera work that make the film a classic. The movie contains multiple single-shot action sequences, massive, stretched-out sequences where the camera tracks a dizzying amount of action. Curran furthered his style in Gravity, another technical piece of mastery. The film's impressive visual effects comprise around 80 of the film's 91 minutes. Like Children of Men, the film is packed with symbolism and philosophical themes. Fortunately, unlike Children of Men, Gravity was a massive box office success and earned widespread public acclaim at its time, including multiple Academy Awards, including the Best Picture. Science fiction has a reputation for asking big questions. As technology continues to progress in the 21st century, we can expect Hollywood to produce science fiction films which not only ask big questions, but continue to inspire us with a sense of awe and wonder.